The Chinese government has been beating down their stocks, especially tech stocks. Now the U.S. government is starting to get smart to Chinese stocks. But it looks like something might have changed. Chinese government might have changed their tune. Let's find out how. A lot of things happening with Chinese stocks. They're down. Some of them are up. Basically, they're completely at the behest and the will of not only the Chinese government, but the U.S. government. You got Didi, uh, you know, like the ride sharing conglomerate in China down way down in the past five days, down 30 percent. That's after today. It's up 40 percent. Right. So it's still down, but it's up 40 percent today. Past five days down roughly 30 percent. Right. So what is going on here? Basically, you have a similar thread. Um, across Didi, Alibaba, and some others that we're going to talk about. So for Didi, in the past few days, the Cyberspace Administration of China told the Didi executives that their data policies to prevent uh, data breaches and data leaks does not comply with that agency's expectations. And as a result of that, Didi suspended its plan to do a Hong Kong listing. Uh, right now, DD is listed on U.S. exchanges through ADRs, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And those ADRs are, are what have really sunk. And it's through ADRs on the New York Stock Exchange. But now DD has been trying to move to the Hong Kong uh, exchange. And then that is put on pause. That was five days ago, that news. Alibaba and other stocks also sank because of U.S. news, because the U.S., also, about five days ago, issued letters. First time this stuff has happened almost in forever, certainly in like many years. We've talked about this multiple times on the show, that these ADRs, which are, which are American depository receipts. So basically, it's a way for you to buy and sell shares of, you know, for example, Chinese or just foreign companies that aren't formally listed on the U.S. exchanges. So they have lighter reporting requirements. Um, and even, even those lighter reporting requirements have not been complied with. And, and that is just the madness of what's been going on with these Chinese stocks for decades, is that we have not held them to the same expectation of other stocks, certainly U.S. companies listing on U.S. exchanges, let alone uh, foreign companies, let's say in Europe, that are listing on U.S. exchanges, whether directly or through an ADR, we hold those companies to much higher standards. Well, they're all supposed to be held to the same standard, but the difference is that we aren't enforcing that standard to the same degree that we are, let's say, for European companies having their shares on U.S. exchanges as compared to these Chinese companies, right? So, for example, having audited financials, allowing a, 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 a U.S. or a Western auditing you know, big accounting firm to go and audit the books of these Chinese companies. You think China is going to let that happen? Absolutely not. So what, are the, what, are, what, are the, what have the U.S. stock exchanges done? Just kind of turned a blind eye and still allowed these shares to be traded, which has hurt a lot of U.S. investors who have ultimately been defrauded. Yes, actual fraud. Recent news is that finally the SEC has issued letters. They've identified five U.S. listed ADRs, so they have lighter reporting requirements than if you were directly listing. But still, even the lighter requirements, it looks like these five companies are failing to adhere to the requirements. These are the first Chinese ADRs to be identified as failing to adhere to this act, Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, pretty good name, if only it was actually enforced. All the Chinese ADRs will likely, be, uh, likely end up on the list because none of them will be able to comply with requests to have their audits reviewed. Because Chinese law prohibits the auditor to provide their review to U.S. regulatory authorities. Can't have a double standard. It's just not fair. It's not fair to other foreign companies that comply. It's not fair to certainly U.S. companies that have even stricter standards. It's not fair to U.S. investors that expect a certain level of honesty, transparency, auditing, and the Chinese law won't allow that to happen, even if these companies, I guess, wanted to do it. The SEC says, you need to give us this information, like audited financials. The Chinese government has a law that says, 
If you're a Chinese company, you can't give your in, your financials to a U.S. government agency. So they literally have never been able to comply with our U.S. laws because of the Chinese laws. But we've never done anything about it until right now. As a result of that news, um, other Chinese stocks that, that are listed through an ADR, like Alibaba, sank on the news. Makes sense, right? And it's the right thing to happen. There should be a common standard of compliance, whether you're from China or not. And if you can't comply, great. You don't get access to U.S. money. This is a great example of what, when I talk about the great decoupling, right? Hey, Chinese companies, if you want to play by our rules and take U.S. investor dollars, then you need to play by the same rules that everyone else plays by. But no, we have always now given these Chinese companies, you know, we've turned, cast a blind eye because we wanted to be accepting and help China come into the 21st century economy. And oh, you know, we, it's like a, a pity case, right? Well, no, they're the second largest economy in the world. They don't need any pity. They shouldn't be getting any special treatment. If anything, they should be getting extra scrutiny rather than less. So finally, some sense is coming to the SEC, just a little bit. Okay, there's a lot more to go. Now, surprise, surprise, stocks are up. DD is up. Baba's up. Why? Optimism has swept investors after China's top administrative authority said it would work to stabilize Chinese stock markets and boost economic growth in the first quarter with, quote, concrete actions. The news out of China also included positive developments on the regulatory front, a welcome sign for the country's embattled tech sector. Basically, now the Chinese government is saying, hey, we want to support our stocks. We want to support these tech companies that we've been beating up for now, like a couple of years. And so, boom, stocks are now up some 20, 30, 40% in one day on that news. So, you know, maybe now, a few days later, this is like just this crazy uh, whipsaw back and forth. You know, now maybe uh, DD will magically be approved by the cyber space, whatever administration in China. Maybe now magically their security protocols will comply. This is what happens when you are at the whim of a totalitarian, authoritarian dictatorship government like the CCP. When you're in their good graces, that's a good thing. When you're out of their good graces, that's a very bad thing. And the, the path to go from bad to good or good to bad doesn't necessarily depend on laws <laughs> and policy, but rather on a bunch of other factors that I would never expect to be able to explain to you. But I can tell you it's not above the level. China is now bullish again on their stocks and these stocks are back up. Will that continue or will this change in a few days? Who knows? Um, but I can tell you, I'm not putting my money into that. I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. If you liked the video, we've got a bunch of other related videos on this topic. Go check out our video where we covered DD's IPO and then the subsequent crash and what happened there. Go check out our other video on educational tech stocks in China and insider trading and a bunch of shady stuff. Check them out and hit that subscribe button.